This is the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Podcast, Episode 14, Improving Your Bottom Line and Water Quality with MRTN. I'm University of Illinois Extension's Todd Gleason. Gary Schnitke, agricultural economist at the U of I, has taken a look at the advisability of lowering 2019 nitrogen application rates on corn. I asked him just exactly what that means. Yeah, so anhydrous ammonia, last report we've had from Illinois Production Cost Report was uh, average price in Illinois from March of $615 per ton. That's almost $100 per ton higher than last year. Obviously, that's going to increase the cost of putting nitrogen on, on, on farmland this year. How's it compared to previous years? So this it's it's up it's the the 2019 cost will be higher than the last three years. The last time we had higher prices than we do now was in 2015, and then anhydrous ammonia was roughly $700 per ton. Yeah, and so that's comparison on today's prices to today's prices, those previous four yeah, years. Yeah, that would so be not a, not a not the fall price, but the March price. Yeah, the March price. We're making comparisons to March in each one of those years. So the MRTN, which is the nitrogen or in-rate calculator, and folks can look this up, just search Google for in-rate calculator. It is on the Iowa State University website, but it's good for all 12 Midwestern states and every county in those states, so you can find your location. That, in the state of Illinois, can be used uh, across the state to uh, optimize the rate of application uh, what does it show you? And I know you use some of the economics out of it to see how things differ at different rates for farmers. Yeah, so we looked at the MRTNs, and for central Illinois farms using anhydrous ammonia, the MRTN is 174 pounds of nitrogen per acre, and that's actual N, not as applied. So 174 pounds of actual N per acre, that's using anhydrous ammonia, and that's the ballpark for where it usually is at in central Illinois. Prices do matter some, but um, mainly it's 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 pretty sticky there in that 170 pounds per acre. Yeah, so. and, and in fact, Emerson Nafziger, agronomist retired now from the University of Illinois, says uh, that's the number for probably the upper two thirds of the state. Yeah, for, but run the numbers yourself. If you're in southern Illinois, it's going to be a little higher. Yeah, absolutely right. So 174 pounds per acre. Um, those, when they develop those MRTNs, that's supposed to be the maximum level of profit. So for maximizing our profit there, any additions to that will lower returns. Yeah, so, so to clarify, because the MRTN will say optimized level of nitrogen, but the optimization is for the maximum return on investment or income. Yeah, that's right. So they take into consideration where that additional pound of nitrogen where the yield break point is is that after you begin putting more on the yield isn't there to cover the cost so you did some work put the numbers in and ran the economics on different rates what did yeah you so let's say you're applying 50 pounds of of and above that i used you're going to do it use 28 percent because you're probably going to put it on in the fall but if you're here in the spring this year 20 if you're putting 50 pounds of additional in on your you have 25 dollars higher cost in nitrogen and you you know this the the yield probably isn't there to cover that return yeah wait so so what you just told me was if you put 50 more pounds on over the optimized level over the 174 so if you were at 124 or at 224 yeah uh, 220 pounds like you're just going to lose 25 bucks essentially. Yeah, I think you're, the costs are going to be about $25 higher. There may be a slight yield yield increase over that level, and that probably doesn't happen every year. So you're probably not going to cover those costs. And in a year like this where we're looking at negative incomes already, saving money on that one input is pretty key. Good stuff. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Todd. That's Gary Schnitke. He's an agricultural economist here on the Urbana-Champaign campus of the University of Illinois. U of I Extension's Haley Haberback is now here. Thanks, Haley, for being with us. Thanks for having me, Todd. 
Okay, so we've been talking with Gary Schnitke uh, about some of the numbers that are developed by the MRT and Emerson Nafziger here on campus, puts all those numbers in from the state of Illinois. Uh, You have some interesting statistics on the impact if everybody in the state were to follow this as it relates to the nutrient loss reduction strategy. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so actually the ultimate goal of the Illinois nutrient loss reduction strategy is a 45% reduction of nitrate, nitrogen, and phosphorus loads. And the reduction is intended to apply equally to the eight-digit hydrologic unit codes or HUC watersheds of the Mississippi River Basin. And so this reduction will be met over time. However, there is interim milestones. And so the interim milestone for 2025 is a 25% reduction in phosphorus loads and a 15% reduction in nitrogen loads. And because of annual load variability, progress is actually measured on a five-year running average. So if all farmers used maximum return to nitrogen or MRTN, we would get closer to meeting our reduction goals. So to understand where we were in regards to MRTN and other nutrient loss reduction strategies, the National Agricultural Statistics Service, or NAS, designed a survey to establish a baseline set for some of the cultural practices in the actually way back in the 2011 crop season. So in addition, the survey was designed to measure some of the cultural practices for the 2015 cropping season as well. And uh, the survey was designed to measure the level of knowledge that producers have on other nutrient loss reduction strategies as well. And so the survey actually showed an increase of more than 600,000 acres between 2011 and 2015 where MRTN was used. And consider that there was 12.6 million acres planted to corn in Illinois in 2011 and 11.7 million acres planted to corn in Illinois in 2015. Uh, there was actually a 70% increase of corn acres uh, followed the MRTN method in 2011, and that grew to 81% in 2015. So the NLRS assumes that producers in most of the state apply nitrogen fertilizers rates similar to the MRTN uh, calculated recommendation. However, it's likely that not all producers are following this guideline, So the NLRS assumes that 10% are well above the MRTN rate and uh, reducing their nitrogen rate down to the MRTN rate would result in a 10% reduction in nitrate nitrogen losses per acre. And when applied to corn acres across the state, this would reduce our overall nitrate nitrogen load by 2.3 million pounds per year or 0.6% of the baseline. So this isn't a large reduction, but the cost is negative, meaning that producers would save money. Haley Haverback is with the University of Illinois Extension. You've been listening to the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Podcast. I'm Extension's Todd Gleason.